Hi, welcome to Shirley Reads. Recently, I read Babel. Is it Babel or Babel? In American English, it is Babel. In British English, it is Babel. Both are right. Babel is dark academia genre. Everyone knows Harry Potter, which is dark academia. It usually features the aesthetics of higher education and the feeling of belonging and friendship. I felt like I was reading a history book with so many historical events, but not to the extent. If you are curious like me, this book will interest you. It is more about colonialism, imperialism, racism, trades between Asia and Britain, and higher education translation etymology. So all these topics fascinated me. Babel is an interesting title. Babel originally meant a tower from the Bible. And this place was believed to be at the heart of Babylon in today's Iraq, where a famous incident happened in the Old Testament. In 2200 BC, men decided to build a tower to reach heaven. And this was the time when all our ancestors spoke a common language. God realized if they spoke a common language, then nothing would be impossible for them. So he decided to confuse and scatter them. This is typically like God did not want people to reach him. So he confused the language of the whole world. So the people scattered all over the world and they started speaking different languages. What were the consequences here? The unity was lost, agreed. What else? The original language, uh, to be precise, the common language that was what people spoke in 2200 BC lost. Currently, everyone has different opinion about the lost language. Some think that could be Hebrew or others think that could be French or Greek and so on. When I narrate the story of this Babel by R.F. Kuang, you will gradually understand how it is related to the biblical Babel. Canton was the city in southern China in the mid-19th century. It has been the major southern port in China as it lies in the head of the Pearl River. It's the main outlet for countries tea, porcelain, spices, silk and handcrafted articles that were sought by western traders. And the name Canton was changed to Guangzhou in the early 20th century. Now the city is called Guangzhou. Let's get into the story. The story is set in the mid-19th century. Our protagonist's name is Robin, who is a timid little boy from Canton. His mother is desperate to do anything for the foreign man Lovell. Lovell is English and a professor teaching in the Translation Institute at Oxford University. This translation institute tower is called Babel in this book. So Lovell uses, abuses Robin's mother and leaves her with a English maid, Miss Betty, with a set of instruction to raise the child Robin. That's how Robin learns English from Miss Betty and the British sailors on the dock. Eventually, the oriental boy got his London accent just by living in Canton. Robin receives a lot of books from Hampstead, London, but he doesn't know who sends them. He also doesn't know. His father is Lovell, but he will come to know about this later in the story. Robin learning English is not an accident. He was chosen. This was meticulously planned by Lovell that an oriental boy should be familiarized with an English accent at a young age. In 1829, Asiatic cholera plague spread from Calcutta to the Far East Manila and then to the shores of China, so that southern China hits the cholera pandemic. All the members of Robin's family died and everyone on a street was already dead. Lovell visits China to take Robin along with him. When he sees him, he has a labored breathing. Lovell takes a silver bar out of his pocket and places it on Robin's chest and he says trickle in French and trickle in English. An unpleasant sound comes from nowhere and the bar takes effect. Robin tastes something sweet on his mouth. In few seconds his uh, breathing becomes normal. I presume the silver thing might have confused you. The silver bars and the Babel Tower are the fantasy elements of this story. All the historical elements are true. The silver bar basically display an effect of the lost meaning. For example, the English word trickle means sugar syrup. It originates from the French word triacle. Triacle originally means antidote, which is a medicine taken to counteract a snake-bitten poison. 
So the original meaning antidote was lost during the translation from the French word triacle to an English word trickle. So if I hold the silver bar where the French word triacle is written on one side and the English word trickle on the other and if I say both these words one by one basically I get the antidote but it will taste like sugar syrup on my tongue. There are some conditions to make the silver thing work. The one who installed the silver in our case is Lovell. He has to hold two meanings in his head at once. It is technically like he should exist in two linguistic worlds. If he is not fluent in speaking both these words, the bar won't work. You will understand more about the silver thing, the fantasy element, when I advance on the story. Lovell tells that he is taking Robin with him to England and he will be providing food and room until he makes his own living. In return, he has to do a translation course where he learns Latin, Greek and Mandarin. Robin thinks uh, instead of begging in Canton, he can study in Britain. It is less like an adoption, more like a business proposal. He doesn't have any resentments about this because he doesn't have anyone in his family. So he lets his life go as the professor wants because he is going to provide everything. Robin left Canton to reside on professor's estate in Hampstead, Yorkshire. So for the most part, the story is set in England, specifically Oxford. This is the century the Britain is leading. but. It's not quite sure the power can move to either China or the Americas or Britain can still hold on to its place. I believe Robin was around 11 when he left Canton. So he has home lessons to prepare him to join Oxford in the next six years and Lovell legally becomes his guardian. His migration was quick so he did not have time to decompress about his loss, his mother. After reaching Hampstead, his lesson started immediately the next day. He learns fundamentals of grammar in Greek and Latin. It is too much for him and he is exhausted. But this has become his routine. He has to adapt it. Eventually, he has adapted in no time. Twice a week, he has a conversational practice in Mandarin with Lovell. When Lovell is not around, he explores the city. Robin presumes Professor Lovell can be his father. He also gradually learns that he was not taken accidentally to England because his upbringing was so clear. He was brought in here for some benefit. Though he knows all these, he doesn't feel bad. He is so indulged in his studies to join Oxford. Robin goes to Oxford by the end of September 1836. This is the era when there was no electricity either. This is the era when women were not treated equally. This is also the era slavery was abolished in England, but people still kept slaves, simply managed to hide them. This is also the era when Chinese King Emperor did not allow teaching Chinese to a foreigner. The students of Babel Tower are called as Babelers. So Robin meets other Babelers, Rami from Calcutta, Letty from Brighton and Victory from Haiti. Letty is also sponsored the same way as Robin and Rami. So they all go to Babel. Only Babelers and professors can enter or exit the Babel Tower. It is highly guarded because of the silver. These Babelers learn languages in the first year, then they can start work in the silver workshop in their second year. Fundamentally, they will find the words that lost that meaning due to translation and engrave them on the silver bar. Then the lost meaning will take its effect from the silver. For example, the word Z in Chinese means crack, but the word Z originates from classical Chinese. In classical Chinese, it means grudge or feud. Consider that the Chinese king emperor uses a bar engraved Z and feed match pad, and he installed this in a stone mural. Consider this bookshelf a stone mural, and I installed it. If crack appears on this bookshelf or mural, then it shows someone is plotting against him. From where they got all this silver? For the very first time, silver was mined from the Andes mountain range in South America in the 16th century. The Spaniards brought it out, out of the mountains, and it made them rich. The richness also made them bad. In the 18th century, Britain took the lead in the Napoleonic War, so they 
took all the silver. That's the reason the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 showed British naval supremacy. So now, without silver, the locomotives would cease to run. The flow of sewage is facilitated by a silver. Without silver, the city would stink. So it is evident that Britain is powered or geared by silver. Able sells silver, it is expensive, so only the wealthy people can afford it. This is the reason Babel walls are highly protected by silver because silver needs more temperature to burn. These walls have more silver than the walls of Bank of England. They protect their grammaticus than the Princess Victoria. Why is that? The Translation Institute Tower is not only for business and commerce but also for the business of colonialism. Everything Babel does is expand the empire, possess all silver and threaten other countries into trade deals that makes the ships faster, soldiers harder and makes their guns even more deadly. If no one breaks this vicious circle, Britain will possess all the wealth in the world. At the same time, China doesn't want anything from Britain than silver. Britain also doesn't want to lose its silver for tea and porcelain. Here there is no concept of diplomacy. Britain starts trading opium with China by convincing them opium is not harmful for health. China understands Britain's motive at certain point. They want to ban this trade. Britain couldn't be lobbyist, so they plan a war against China. Robin learns all these little by little from Oxford, mostly from his half-brother Griffin, who is also from China. Griffin admits that he steals silver, manuscripts, engraving materials from Babel and funnel them across England to his associates throughout the world. He works for Hermes Society. Hermes Society is like a militant group. They break Britain's vicious circle by funneling away the silver to communities and people that deserve it. Hermes Society know that working class people started losing their jobs because the silver bars installed on missions. Even if these working class people were Luddites, they are forced to work to feed their families because they have starvation issues. Only a few people are ignoring their daily needs and hunger and protesting for their rights. Robin finds that his mother could have been saved using silver. He couldn't control his anger at Lovell. Lovell's ignorance in noticing Robin's emotion made Robin join Hermes Society and assist them in stealing resources from Babel. Since the Hermes Society expects Britain needs to distribute all the silver bars all around the world to the backward countries, when all these backward countries have every opportunity to construct their own translation centers, why must be a Britain's problem if other nations fail to take advantage of what they have? Shouldn't we accept here that British are clever and industrious? It doesn't seem that silver trading doesn't make them nefarious, uh, but they are using their brains for business. Can Britain start a war and invade China? Can Robin really understand Hermes society motives and British Empire's wickedness? Does Lovell accept Robin as a son? Can Robin really stop Britain's colonialism and imperialism? These are all the rest of the story. No, it's not a story. I must say it was a great adventure. Sorry, I have to cut down the narration because the video is already lengthy. I was not surprised when I read Rebecca F. Kwang is from Guangzhou the 19th century canton and she also studied in Oxford. It is apparent she has lived and studied in these places. I love R. F. Kwang's writing style. I often wonder while reading some good plot twist what the current epic story is that she is into. There are more things about food, culture and living in Britain in Babel. At one point, I started to tag yellow face with pancakes and Babel with scones. I was surprised. Oh my god, it was forced on my head because of her writing style. If you haven't watched my review about the yellow face, please click on the link above on your right. And one more thing, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and click the bell icon. I literally lived in England. Currently, I am living in Scotland. So, I can sense there are certain things. Scots disapprove of English and English disapprove of Scots. These things are well written in Babel. All the characters are well developed. None of the primary and secondary characters just popped in and disappeared on a single page. Babel is high-handed. Letty is the English primrose. She could only pursue what she had been through. From Rami, I got the typical Indianness. 
It is a huge effort retaining Indian as an Indian in a Chinese American author's novel. The multiculturalism among friends and their differences in opinions are genuine. Well done. Though I don't remember the grammar stuff, literature references, architects and translators now, while reading it was interesting and well blended to the story. I was highly surprised how most of the words originate either from Latin or Greek. Also, I got the Harry Potter vibes when Griffin and his friends tried to hide under the cloak. Colonialism and imperialism were well narrated in Babel with a slash hammering approach. We can't deny the fact that most of the countries are still facing the consequences because of colonialism. Primarily, we are losing our language. Babel was like sailing on a boat in the ocean. From the shore, it felt good. On the shallow water, it was adventurous. The deep water or the giant waves were cruel and violent. Often, I feel scared of reviewing thick books because I might miss some crucial information. So, I highly recommend reading this book. Thank you for watching and staying with me for such a long time. I will meet you guys in another book review. Until then, a lot of love and hugs.